Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Panagios Pradas or Panos Pradas. And today we'll learn how to play the basic and the one of the most famous riffs in the rock history. That riff is from the famous song Sadness on Swing by Dire Straits. Now, why is this riff so famous? Because A is one of the most easiest one. And secondly, is the best riff because it's easily recognizable. It's easily recognizable from all around the guitar players all around the world, and also from the beginners ones that want to learn how to play the electric guitar, and not only. And for those that like them, also the rock repertoire. So today we will see how to play the famous riff from Dire Straits, South to Swing. Okay. Let's see now our ramp settings. We want to be as as closer to the original sound, right? Okay, so we must say firstly our ramp settings. In the songs, in the original song, we didn't have uh, we didn't have this bass, we didn't have so much bass. We don't have so much bass, you know, as the hard rock stuff is going like gang, 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 along with the distortion. We want, simply, we want something more soft. We want something which is more soft, but against rock, but more soft. So we need a bass around to three, a middle to treble, special middle because we have a lot of middles, a lot of middle notes that are sounding around to five, six. I would put it around six, six. And finally, we want our treble around 4 to 5. I would put it around the middle, neither 4, neither 5, because I don't want to, be, to sound more. I don't want to sound a lot. I want most of sound middle in this part, in this riff. So, I would also choose my pickup to be around, not even down pickups, but my sweets around in the middle to be sound, something like this. I think that this is the most suitable sound. This is perfect. For me, it's perfect. Okay. But firstly, before learn, before to learn a read. Let me demonstrate you how it sounds. It's sounding something like this. This is our riff. This is our riff from the chords of Saddles of Swing. Now we'll see it. Now we'll see the structure of the riff from what it consists of and how to play it. Our riff is consists from only four chords totally. D M or D minor, C or C major, B flat or B flat major, and finally F or F major. But we have a difference. These three chords, except from F, they are all in the second inversion. We know from the music theory that the chords are consist and uh, there are totally three positions in the chords. Its original root position, the first inverse position, and the second inversion position. For example, if we have a D minor, we know that its root position is consists from the bass note D. A, D, F, and A, which sound like this. D as our bass note, which is the bass of the chord. F in the middle and A at the top. But here, because we are in the second verse of the chord, the note in the top becomes the bass of the chord. So instead of D, F, A, we put the A in the bass, and so the F is becoming the top and the D the middle note. So it sounds like A D F, which is like this. The 
same logic applies to is also in C major and B flat major. For example, C major, we know that root position is C, E, and G, right? Okay. So its second inversion position will be like G, C, E. The same applies also to B flat. From its root position, B flat, D, and F, we have its second inversion which goes like F. B flat and D. So, let's go now to learn our riff and our riff slowly. Also, the F chord is on the second verse position. Its original is F A C, but its inverse position, especially the second version. It sounds like C F A. So now let's go to learn our song slowly. Firstly, let's see the chords. Firstly, we have our D chord in the second version, which sounds like this. But to play it, we must press. Our seventh friend in our D string, note A, the same friend on our on our D string, the D note, and finally our sixth friend on the seventh string, B. And totally and with all the notes together, we have D chord in the second inversion. Then, as I am here, with my fingers, I prefer mostly to have my third, fourth, and seventh finger because then it comes the bear chord with the second version of the C chord, which is like a bear only the fifth fret, but we play only the fourth, third, and seventh string D, G, and B. So it's most easy. So it's most easier for me to put just the fingers two, three, and four, set out my second, third, and fourth finger to then play with the barret on the fifth fret physically and normally. And then I just take my finger and slide it to the third fret, my barret, just slide it, move it to the third, to the third fret, you see? Slide or with slide or without slide, and then with this barrel playing the same strings as our previous C chord, we have our B flat chord on the second version F, B flat, and D, and then. I return back to my original chord, to my initial and beginning chord, which was the D, the D minor in second version. Then, when I'm going to repeat and continue with my C chord, I do the barrel, but I don't play it with my fingers. I do a legato like this. And playing. I repeat the D chord and then immediately legato to C. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one, but after with constant practice and patience, especially practice, practice, and more practice, it will become easier to you. Like this. And then I'm playing back again a C chord. One more time with my fingers. Thumb index and middle. Then I move again my barrel, but I move it fourth to my tenth fret, which is which is there located in the same strings, my F chord in the sec in second version, which is C, F and A note. Which sounded which 
together sounds like this. Okay, so when I play once my F chord, I bring my fingers and I form the original C chord in its root position. Yes, you heard right. I put my third finger or the third fret in the D string, the C note. My second finger on the ninth fret on the ninth fret in my G string, which is E. And finally, my first finger to the eighth fret in my second string, B string, D. So together these three notes, C, E, D, they sound like this. So, when I have finished the first part, the first half of the riff, the hat, so, we can say that, sorry for the setup, we can say there and here that we have learned the first half of our riff, which goes like and we let the C ring. All the other chords, we just play them pa, staccato, pa, pa, like this. And we let the B flat here to ring. We let the C, the C chord here to ring a little bit, but then immediately change to that fret. And finally, we let our C chord to read it's not root position, ring a little bit more to ring along also with some vibrato if you want up down or just normal or but I prefer mostly this and then the second half is similar we have also the same chord progression B, C, B, B, C, B flat D, D, C, C but now here comes the most fun part we have a little bit melody that this close our riff as consists around we just play our D note in the 5th fret of our A string then we are doing immediately Sando two frets fourth in our seventh fret in our E note. This this thing. And then we are then we are follow the same logic, but in the D string we are we just press the, our fifth fret in the D string in our T note. And then we are pressing our 7th fret in the same string, our A note. So we have here until now 4 notes, D, E, G and A. But I don't play them, but I don't play them separately. I play D, E with Lisando and G, A with Legato. along with some vibrato also but up down vibrato to sound a little bit more rock so our total riff the complete riff until there and this here it sounded like this one two So, 
faster in the faster tempo it's like this Thank you very much and I hope that you enjoyed our, and I hope that you enjoyed our today's lesson. So bye bye and see you the next time. Thank you very much.